can be proud. Can you take us through the progress that has been made since the signing of the Constitution? Um, thank you very much, um, Hugo, and to the viewers. Indeed, um, as uh, many viewers are aware, the Constitution was a product of protracted negotiations and discussions, which culminated into the signing of the Constitution, as you have said, in December um, 1996, and it came into effect in February 19, um, uh, 1997. Uh, the Constitution, um, as we know now, has lived with us for about 24 years, and it has evolved over time. It was a break with the past, and um, we believe that it has effected changes to the lives of many South Africans and in the manner in which um, the society of South Africa was constructed. It has built a social contract, and it is the values through which the South African society is seen. The socio-economic challenges remain um, that um, the constitution was also aimed to to level the uh, bring an equilibrium with regards to socio-economic issues. We still have a number of challenges in that regard that also leads to high level of inequality in our society. But progress has been registered. Some of the challenges have also been exacerbated by the current situation of uh, COVID-19 which has also taken us back by, by many years in terms of uh, showing some of the fault, fault lines that the Constitution intended to, to address. So it has been indeed a challenging 24 years, but it has also been a period where it has been proven that the rule by, 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 by the rule of law um, is the only way nations can build a society where everyone can live together and they are bound together by a constitutional document which is now um, a living document and is also a um, reigning supreme in our society everyone now recognizes that the constitution is the supreme law of the land it is no longer parliamentary sovereignty now minister what are some of the highlights since the constitution came into effect 24 years ago I think there have been lots of um, highlights in terms of, firstly, the government um, laying a foundation for a society which is built on the views of the people, where the people have got views they can input uh, from time to time in terms of uh, elections, but also in terms of making laws that we are now, as a government, obliged to consult the people of this country. It is now a, a, an expression of the will of society in terms of various policies, and it reflects those values. There have also been highlights in terms of the respect of the Constitutional Court uh, from President Mandela. When uh, he was called upon to appear before the courts, he will always respect. There's also, remember, the decision of uh, S. versus Mokwanyana by the Con Court with regards to the right to life. And there have also been many life-changing decisions by the Concord in relation to uh, socio-economic right, the superman judgment, and many others that have uh, tilted the, 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 the issues that relate to socio-economic rights, including issues that relate to health, the, uh, the action treatment campaign. And there's also been a, a lot of work that government has done to build a government which is also based on the constitution in terms of the various parts of the country. So there are indeed highlights that uh, we can point as a, as a people of this country that emanated from, the, from this uh, constitution, which is a contract which bind all of us. Now, Minister, we are a young democracy, and with the young democracy obviously comes the fact that we have many young people that would look for access to, to the Constitution to get an understanding of it. How really available is the Constitution to the average person on the street? We, 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 we will want to believe that it's readily available because you can now um, access it from the website of a, of a GCIS government. It is also available on the website of the of the of the department of justice and they also at the beginning around 1996 i remember when i was still at the unit at the, at high school um they 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 they, they brought uh, the constitution to be distributed to us as students those were the early stages but now any south african can, can access it uh, through the websites where there are challenges with regards to access to websites and the uh, technology 
they, they could also access it in the courts near their places and even in some of the government departments which could be able to, to help for people to access the constitution. But we also have a branch in the, in the, in the Department of Justice which is uh, uh, responsible for constitutional awareness and uh, to educate society uh, with regards to their rights and also with regards to, to the constitution itself. Now, given that South Africa has a history of gross human rights violations, how are constitutional rights protected in a democratic South Africa? I think um, in the past uh, 24 years, uh, uh, and also starting uh, with the interim constitution, um, the, the rights of South Africans have now been entrenched, and I think they are mostly protected by the, the, the various institutions that have been built to to protect uh, the, the rights of South Africans through the courts, through the Chapter 9 institutions that are there, which I think they've also been tested through various um, court judgments. But also institutions of the state, they are also playing a role to, to ensure that they advance the interests and the rights of South Africans through various departments, uh, human settlement, uh, the provision of education, the provision of health care, and the various components uh, that the, the, the Bill of Rights uh, uh, wants to be protected and also advanced. But um, uh, when all those fail, the, the courts and the Chapter 9 institutions are there to, to protect the rights of uh, South African citizens. Now, there have been calls by some political parties in South Africa to postpone the elections for various reasons. Is this possible? And if so, what would be the processes around that? Yeah, no, there is that uh, debate um, in, uh, uh, raging in society, but um, the IEC has stated that um, they, they are ready and um, that um, uh, at this stage we do not have any constitutional provision that um, uh, will allow uh, or permit for such a situation. Um, it, it will be a very unique, difficult situation which uh, may be forced uh, because of the current uh, natural uh, pandemic that we're facing of COVID-19. It's a difficult situation because um, uh, as we speak now, uh, many people can't congregate. Many people also can't um, exercise their political rights of associations or of campaigns. Uh, but um, uh, there, there are also uh, examples across the globe where elections did happen during the, the period of the pandemic, the recent one being the United States. There have also been elections in Tanzania. So we can also learn from those lessons and find our unique South African solution to this challenge that uh, we are going to face, particularly with the local government elections that are supposed to happen this year, and also uh, the national elections as and when they come, depending on whether we'll have reached um, herd immunity uh, in terms of the COVID-19 uh, vaccination process and, um, and uh, our response, which we hope that by that time we, would, we could have reached um, had immunity, but the reality is that the, the local government elections are under threat because of the current um, situation of COVID-19 that no one knows uh, what will be the situation by the time we, we reach the, the period of local government. So I think it will need um, a collective decision and collective wisdom of all political parties in the country and also civil society and all role players to come to the a, a, some kind of a discussion to say what then do we do because um, we are faced with this situation of the pandemic and the constitution is also silent when you are faced with this kind of a situation what then uh, should be done because um, it is indeed a unique kind of a situation that we'll have to to find a way out of it if we are going to be faced uh, by it as um, we move towards the local government elections. So would it be an idea or is it feasible to then put in a, a clause or an amendment in the Constitution to cater for situations such as these, should, God forbid, it recur in the future? Yeah, I think it is. Um, it will be a, a wise thing to, to put and uh, develop the Constitution to that level because, uh, uh, as you have said, God forbid, no one knew that we will face a, a pandemic. But we now know that the pandemics could be issues that uh, we are going to live with for, for quite some time because uh, scientists are predicting that it looks like uh, we will have uh, more of these uh, kind of uh, situations. So it's better that we, 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 we prepare ourselves even through our constitutional uh, architecture. And, uh, and with the current situation that we are facing, where the constitution 
uh, uh, does not really provide for us to be able to to to, to find a, a leeway. It will need a, a lot of uh, heads being put together by by various um, stakeholders and societies. I've already said but also looking in terms of the clauses of the constitution very closely to see um, what is it that uh, could be done. Because if there is a reality that uh, we in reality with all the, 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 the political will of everyone to, to go through the process of elections, it is practically impossible. Then what should happen? So that is a kind of a discussion that I think is necessary now. And then um, it should be uh, taken through our parliamentary process or through um, processes that um, enable stakeholder engagements with the various political parties and all the role players in South Africa, civil society, business, and um, all people responsible for local government. Now just a reminder, you can be a part of this conversation by tagging us on the hashtag NewsfeedPM, or you can WhatsApp your questions and comments to 072-110-5584. Stay with 405. We'll be right back. Justice and the Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamula is with me as we look at the 24th anniversary of the coming into effect of the Constitution on the 4th of February 2021. Now we have a few of your comments that have been coming through on our Twitter and WhatsApp and we're going to take a look at those right away and an opportunity for the Minister to respond to some of those uh, comments and suggestions. This one is from Cleopas Marapa in Soweto and he says the South African Constitution has to be celebrated where it holds the laws that guide and keep us together as a nation. Without it, it's tantamount to dictatorship. Justice is equal and is born out of mutual agreement. Lentikila says it is a shame to celebrate 24 years at the time when ANC and Zuma are defying the law. Can the minister give clarity on ACE's comments about that the constitution is not sacrosanct? Does that mean ANC can change the constitution when it suits their agenda like they did with Section 25? Minister, I think you've heard that uh, last tweet. Is the constitution not sacrosanct? Yeah, it is a, a sacrosanct uh, document and that means that it cannot be just changed willy-nilly. Uh, it needs uh, the required percentage of majority in parliament stipulated in the constitution to, to, to change it. And that's why uh, we will always say that uh, although it's sacrosanct, it is a living document where uh, when you there are a, a requisite majority and there are reasons to, to effect amendments to, to achieve certain objective, it, it, there is a, a necessity. And um, I think what is unique with the current uh, engagement with regards to obviously section 25 of the constitution which is still a discussion, and, and you can see that it's taking time. It also shows that uh, all considerations are put in place to ensure that whatever that happens is in line with the Constitution, and even the amendment is informed, and um, it is uh, compliant with the Constitution. And that um, it's, uh, it's important for a constitutional democracy that uh, it is not an easy thing to, to change the, 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 the Constitution. But um, where there have been issues that have been identified, and the parliament is in agreement, it should be practically possible to to, to do so. Um, and um, I think uh, with regards to Section 25, the other unique aspect is that um, it will be for the first time that um, we, we amend the Bill of Rights um, since uh, it was uh, adopted uh, 24 years ago, the Constitution. The Constitution has been amended uh, many times, uh, various sections of the Constitution, but um, the Chapter 2, which uh, deals with the Bill of Rights, has never been amended. And uh, this will be the first time as we deal with the issue of Section 25, which is an important issue because even the preamble of the Constitution speaks about uh, redressing the imbalances of the past. And, um, uh, and I think that is what uh, the debate and the discussion happening in the Parliament is aiming to do, to redress the imbalances of the past. So it is consistent with the Constitution itself and the preamble. And um, I think uh, with regards to to the to the second comment about uh, that the, the ANC is defying uh, uh, or is not obeying the constitution, the the ANC uh, has uh, committed itself on several occasions to to obey and to comply with the constitution. Um, hence, um, uh, uh, it chose from the beginning, from ready to govern, it uh, it spoke about um, a, a constitutional democracy rather than a parliamentary sovereignty. 
And when we speak about the constitutional uh, democracy, it means that the co constitution is the supreme law of the country. And the constitutional court is the final arbiter on any matter in the, which is uh, adjudicated upon uh, on constitutional issues. So they, they can't begin saying about the commitment of the ANC. It has got a proven track record in the past uh, 24 years of respecting the constitution. And um, hence, um, even the constitution itself is a product of the ANC's inputs and engagements because the ANC does not just exist for itself, but it exists to change the lives of South Africans and also in the interest of, uh, of South Africa. It also recognizes the constitution as the supreme law. And um, that's why you can go to all historical documents of the ANC. It does speak about um, the issue of um, a con the, 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 the constitutional democracy. Even long before we, 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 we adopted the constitution and we achieved the period, uh, the, the, the freedom uh, in 1994, the ANC was already speaking about the role of the constitution as a supreme law. And um, even uh, the Freedom Charter speaks about equality before the law. So we all respect the constitution as a guiding document and we all respect that we should abide by uh, by the constitution, also abide by decisions of the of the courts. Hence, even in government, uh, we we always abide, respect the decisions of the courts. And I think the ANC also subject itself um, to, to 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 the decisions of the courts and also to the constitution of the country. I'm glad you raised those issues, Minister. I'd like to quote what you said a few days ago. Uh, he said, and I quote. President Zuma himself, when he introduced the commission, has called for all of us to support the work of the commission and not to impede its work and to ensure that as a collective wisdom of the nation, we give the support. End of quote. So we have a situation on our hands, and I was hoping you'd be able to, to comment on uh, President Zuma's refusal to appear before the commission. Yes, um, as, uh, as you, are, you are saying, uh, President Zuma established the, the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. Uh, he also provided the terms of reference of the, of the Commission of Inquiry. He also called upon um, all of us, all South Africans, to, to support the work of the Commission. He also called um, all of us to not to impede its work. And um, we expect that um, the same from him and from all South Africans to give support to the commission, to cooperate with the commission, to, 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 to if they've got any issue, the commission is the good platform to ventilate whatever issues. And then um, if you are not satisfied, there is also the courts where you can still ventilate whatever issues that you may want to raise and, um, and, and, and argue. But when the courts have made decisions, we all have to, to respect those because if, um, we defy the, the, the decisions of the courts. We will be um, uh, sowing the seeds for, for anarchy in our country, where we will no longer be having um, something that binds us together, and also that um, will ensure that all of us respect the, the, the rule of law, because um, the courts, they rely on our collective consciousness as a nation to respect the decisions of the courts, uh, in that um, those decisions, uh, although they are in a paper, we are all expected as a nation to, to abide by them so that we can continue with the social contract that has been built by the constitution and to not to descend into, into anarchy. Now, normal channels have failed to persuade uh, President Zuma to go before the commission. Now, what options are available to Deputy Chief Justice Zondo and his uh, commissioners? Yeah, our, our attitude as government, uh, and we have been very clear with regards to to the commission is that um, we want to give it its own life and that i mean that uh, we have given the commission all the the laws there's the commission act and um, as lawmakers and also the regulations that um, the president um, and the uh, president zuma when he started the commission had promulgated and president ramaphosa from time to time he will uh, uh, amend the regulations <clears throat> as and when the need arise uh, in terms of the request of the commission itself. So the commission has got all the instruments that will enable it to, to function, to, 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 to conclude its work, uh, including instruments uh, to, to, to compel people or to sampuna people to appear before the commission, and also instruments to interact with the courts 
uh, 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 when some people defy. So the rules of the commission, they were built in such a manner that uh, those that uh, cooperate voluntarily, uh, they can still work. And But it has also been built in anticipation for those that may not want to cooperate with the work of the commission. There are still instruments that uh, the commission can use. So we leave that to to the commission to, to deal with all those uh, aspects uh, because uh, we believe that should be in the hands of the commission without um, uh, directives from the from the from the executive. Well, what we can say is that um, we we want the commission to expeditiously uh, finalize its work. It is in the interest of the country that uh, the work of the commission is 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 is, is not impendent and it's uh, it's finalized so that we can all know what uh, happened uh, in terms of the issues that are in the terms of reference. Um, uh, of the commission and also that the nation can move forward to then say these were the challenges we need to implement these recommendations and how do we then move forward so the work of the commission is very important for our constitutional democracy hence uh, it has to be supported it has to to, to be completed so that the south african society uh, as a as a constitutional democracy that we are celebrating today can then grow and move forward uh, from what we will have learned, uh, the lessons uh, that will come from the from the commission. We have a caller from Pretoria. Kalane, thank you so much for calling 405. Please go ahead with your comments and question. Okay. I wanted to ask the minister, uh, why are political parties relevant and what role do they play in the country's constitution? And what section of the ANC constitution are in contrast with the country's constitution. Kalana, thank you for your call, Minister. That question coming from uh, one of our viewers. Yeah, political parties are voluntarily uh, associations where members of society can individually uh, participate uh, in terms of uh, the constitution which uh, allows for freedom of association. So that they can contribute to the life of the of the country uh, and uh, make their own uh, contribution. But uh, you are aware that um, the, the the constitutional court and uh, even in local government uh, individuals can also make a contribution. But it has been proven that when uh, you uh, participate in a in an association like a political part where you are a, a collective of many people. You, you make more impact because um, you, your weight can be spread, but also it also means that uh, because um, the, the voting process uh, also involves majority, your voice is more, uh, will be more, uh, uh, will, uh, you will enable to, to, to gain more seats and participate in the various uh, forums like uh, local government, like uh, provincial legislatures, and also national legislature to, 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 to impact the life of, um, of, 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 of any of, of, of our society here or any society in the world. And that's how it is across the globe. Um, they, 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 I'm not aware of any clause in the ANC constitution which is contrary to, to the constitution of the country. They, 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 as I've said earlier, the, the ANC, the ANC uh, does not exist for itself. It exists to impact and uh, uh, and uh, and promote the objectives of South Africa. So, the constitution of, of the ANC, uh, I'm not aware of any clause which is uh, contrary to to the constitution of the country. And um, the constitution of the country is um, is the supreme law. Any uh, constitution of any uh, political party in the in the country should be consistent with the provisions of the constitution of the country. Now, just a reminder, you can be part of this conversation by tagging us on hashtag Newsfeed PM or WhatsApp your questions and comments to 072-110-5584. February, February 4th marks a significant day in the history of South Africa, as it is on this day 24 years ago that the South African Constitution came into effect, signed into law on the 10th of December 1996. The Constitution came into effect February 4th, 1997, marking the closure of a chapter of exclusion and paving a path to transforming the legal, political, socio-economic landscape 
of the country. Now I've been speaking to you for the last half hour by the Justice and Correction Services Minister, Ronald Lamula. Now remember, you can be a part of this conversation by tagging us on the hashtag Newsfeed PM, or you can WhatsApp your questions and comments on 072 110 5584. As we get back into our conversation, we're going to take a look at a few WhatsApp messages that you have sent through in the last half hour. The Constitution is the supreme law of the Republic. South Africa is a constitutional democracy. It is the highest law of the land. No one or even the president or former presidents can go against it. The courts are not to be bullied by anyone. Courts are independent and subject only to the Constitution and the law. The Constitution is the cornerstone of South Africa. And this is from DG Disejo, who writes to us from the Free State. The next one, two points I want to raise on the minister, to the minister, Lamola. One is why so-called high-profile people have to disregard the law from the highest court of the land. And as Minister of Justice, what is your take regarding this matter of Zuma? Minister Lamola, can you please reorganize the process of recruitment, particularly in Correctional Service Department? And that's from Cheeseman and Pretoria West. Minister, a couple of thoughts for you there to respond to? Yeah, I think uh, I have uh, already answered uh, some of the questions there. And um, one is that um, I agree. I mean, it's not uh, in dispute that the Constitution is the supreme law of the country. And um, we are all subject to, to the Constitution. And then... Um, the, the question why uh, high profile uh, people are defying uh, the constitution and uh, to the best of my knowledge and uh, if um, my memory serves me well um it, it, it is for the first time that uh, we have um, a, a, such a high profile uh, like a, a former president defying the constitution uh, president mandela when he was called upon to appear uh, before the courts he appeared and when he was ordered he, he respected the, the, the court orders. Uh, I don't remember uh, former President Mbeki uh, defying any uh, constitutional uh, uh, order. And um, I also remember him appearing before the, the, the arms deal commission of inquiry to, to answer and account. And um, and um, and I know people always cite the, the, the issue of uh, Peter Porter. And my view is that we cannot really look into the standards of P.W. Porter as the standards through which we measure leaders, uh, revolutionary leaders who have led um, the struggle uh, against apartheid. Uh, but anyway, P.W. Porter went through also the processes where he was convicted in the lower courts, uh, which uh, uh, conviction was overturned by the, by the Supreme Court of Appeal on technicalities uh, with regards to the fact that they, they raised an issue that um, uh, his conviction uh, 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 was uh, on the basis of an invalid process that was followed, or there were technicalities or defects that were followed by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission um, uh, to, to bring him to court or to Sampuna him or to the commission, or there was a technicality there. So we cannot uh, use that as an, as an excuse for, for any leader now in our in our democracy for for not um, abiding by court decisions and for not um, supporting the work of the of the of the commission and uh, cooperating and ensuring that it is not impended so i think we we we, we the, there is no grounds for for that comment that the high profile people are, are not obeying the the laws of the country they, they, there's been general compliance and respect of the rule of law in this country even government uh, complies with the court orders there will be obviously indiscretions there and there but uh, in general overwhelmingly uh, most uh, government departments and uh, those that are in uh, positions of leadership in society in general uh, respect the the courts and it's important that we all respect the courts because if we do not respect the courts and its decisions, um, it will be a breeding ground for, for anarchy and uh, illegality. It may also affect um, uh, our, our, our situations of resolution of disputes uh, and the uh, political stability and so forth. So that's why it's important that um, ourselves as leaders or whoever has been a leader to, 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 to abide by, by the constitution as a contract that we've all agreed to to be our guiding document 
Minister, we've got a couple of WhatsApp messages that have come through, and we are going to take a call shortly just to let you know. Let us uphold the most inclusive constitution in the world. Let the process of the law and our courts put Zuma behind bars. This will show the world that South Africa is serious about upholding the constitution and treasuring our values. Chris Bengler from Cape Town. Samora from uh, Tabazimbi, thanks so much for tuning in to 405. Your thoughts or questions, please. Uh, I just want to make a statement about these very uh, high profile people who have not applied to the Constitution of South Africa. The Constitution nowadays, according to the high profile people, is just uh, it was supposed to serve as a guideline for our country. But currently, it's just a documented theory which is put aside and get it not because the minister is just telling us things that we can only remember. The former president defies the rule of the country, the rule of the constitution. But there's nothing happening about it. And I feel like I'm no longer becoming a, 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 a proud South African because the constitution is not a day, a tool to be used with day. But it's used wrongly because they know where they can cut, uh, they can they can break the, 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 the rules. They know where they can do the shortcut because they're the one who's in control. And I'm a South African. I, I'm no longer proud, my friend. I'm telling you, I will be honest with the minister. Stop telling us things that we can only remember about the former president. Tell us what's the real. Thank you very much. Samar, so, thank you for your call. Minister. You talked about possible anarchy. And I think we do have a situation on our hands where President Zuma has uh, refused uh, after the Concord ruling. Um, is this not paving way for anarchy? Yeah, I, I'm not sure what the, the viewer is talking about when he says there's nothing that is being done. I mean, the Commission of Inquiry is still sitting, and I think it is following all the processes and the procedure as stipulated in terms of the Commissions of Inquiries Act and also the regulations that guide the Commission of Inquiry. What should happen when um, a, a person does not cooperate with the work of the Commission? And I think we need to to give um, a, 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 that space to, to the Commission to, to do its job in terms of those rules and also in terms of the Act. Sorry, it, maybe, it maybe does, Minister, it, just to, to throw something in there, you had mentioned that the Commission does have instruments that they can employ in the instance uh, where someone like President Jacob Zuma defies in order to appear before the commission. Can you take us through what some of those instruments are, please, in addition to the things that you're already talking to us about? Yeah, the instruments is that uh, they can subpoena, and um, if the person does not want to come, they can uh, also open a case um, against that person with the police uh, to ensure that that person goes through a, a trial in relations to to that uh, failure to 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 abide by 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 the, by the, by the by the by the subpoena of the of the, of the commission. So it, it has got in our view as the as the as as government we have given the commission uh, those instruments uh, in terms of the law, the commissions act, and also in terms of the regulations to enable the commission to to do its work and also to conclude because we are of the view that the work of the commission. It must be supported and is very important for our constitutional democracy. So do you see a day if President Zuma continues to defy um, the Zondo Commission where he might face jail time? I don't want to give a hypothetical uh, scenario uh, because I also do not want to give instructions to, to the commission what to do and what not to do. What I'm just stating is what the commission has as instruments that it can use. But um, it is now up to the commission itself to then use those instruments that are before the commission. And um, uh, as you are aware, the, 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 there is a, a, I cannot overlap into the, into the work of the judge uh, because we are in the executive. What we do, we promulgate the regulations and the laws that governs the commission of inquiry, which in this instance we have done. And we believe the commission does have all the instruments that it can use to ensure that the uh, uh, former president Zuma uh, complies. And uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, if it doesn't, then uh, they can ensure that uh, all the processes of the law are, are followed. 
Now, as a member of the ANC, uh, what message is President Zuma's defiance sending to ANC leadership and obviously to the citizens of South Africa as a whole? Now, obviously, as you have heard from the uh, uh, comrade Balega Mbete, it is uh, sending a very wrong message uh, to young people, to to the members of the ANC, uh, in that um, uh, obviously it does not show a respect for the rule of law. And um, it also uh, 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 sends the wrong message to the country as a whole uh, in terms of the, of the respect of the rule of law. And I believe that um, even if um, there the, 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 the could be any other issue that may want to be raised, the platform of the commission and our courts that are there are a better place for, for those issues to, to be ventilated in a manner that is still within the confine of the procedures established by 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 by, by the constitution and the, the processes of the of the of the courts, the judiciary, and also that of the of the of the Commission of Inquiry. I'd like to take you to a statement that was issued by President Zuma on Monday, uh, in which he contended that his defiance was motivated by the Constitutional Court ruling that he did not have a blanket right to silence in response to the hundreds of questions the inquiry wishes to put to him. Can you take us through what this actually means? Uh, no, I will not be able to do that because I'm not the spokesperson of uh, President Zuma. I don't know what what that really means. Uh, uh, for, 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 for me, is that... Um, the, the, the rules and the procedures of the of the of the commission they allow for fair hearing for everyone's rights to be protected and they also allow a person to 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 participate in a manner that is uh, uh, his rights are protected and guaranteed by the by the constitution and uh, the constitutional court is ruling i think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's it's very it's very it's very clear that it says that the um, uh, he does not. Uh, he, he he has got the, he does he has got the right not to self-incriminate, uh, which is uh, something which is guaranteed by the by the constitution, uh, uh, and um, it's what is guiding the work of, uh, of 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 any forum of that nature. So, uh, in 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 my view, is that um, the forum is fair. The forum it's um, is in line with the constitution. Is in line with the commissions of inquiries act. And it's in line with all uh, universal established uh, procedures of a fair hearing. So I think it's where if anyone has got a gripe with the, those issues, uh, uh, how the commission is run and so forth, he can ventilate those issues in the commission. They can also ventilate them in any uh, other appropriate forum if they are not satisfied with the outcome of the commission. Minister, thank you so much for being a part of this discussion this evening. That was Justice and Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamula.